DJ Jazzy Jeff saying what he does about you, that you are, in his opinion, the number one female DJ in the world. That's some serious props. <laughs> How does that feel? Um, it's great. He was like someone that I grew up um, trying to emulate and and I, I just like, admired him. I used to like study him. So for him to actually say that about me, I was just like, whoa, that's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Yeah. But I mean, what made you think that I can be a DJ? Yeah, because I, I mean, I started when I was really young. Um, I think maybe I was like 12. And wow. Yeah, and no one really understood why I was doing it or that I was even going to take it seriously. Um, but I just, I was just fascinated with it. I'm the type of person, if I am into something, I'm into it. Like, right. I, I, I will study it until I'm like, you know, obsessed with it. And that's what happened, you know, like I, I saw my cousins, I had I have older cousins that were DJing. Um, in over England, like all the big clubs like Ministry of Sound and all the clubs like in the north of England. Yeah. And they were doing really well, like in the early 90s. So I used to kind of watch them practice. Mm -hmm. They never ever let me um, practice with them. I waited for my brother to go to university. And so I'd just sneak into his room and I'd practice and I picked it up quite quick. And then I was, I was DJing without knowing that I was even DJing. So when did you take it from your brother's bedroom out into the real world? Probably when I was 15 or 16, maybe just turned 16. Um, my brother took me to my first gig and it was like a local club in Croydon where I'm from. And it was horrendous. It was just a horrible experience. Why? Because when I was really young, it was mm -hmm. first, I think it was the first time I went to a club as well. Wow. So it was the first time I was going to a club, first time I was DJing, first time I was experiencing nightlife. Right. And I literally, I turned up to the door and I obviously didn't look like a DJ. So the bouncer told me to go to the back of the line as though I was just a normal person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, no. And I was too little to kind of stand up to him. I'm standing there for ages and then like there was a few people in the line that were like my friends. Eventually they just started shouting, she's the DJ, what's wrong with you? Just let her in. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm the DJ. <laughs> Aww. Um, and yeah, it was just horrible. So how did you go from that horrible experience to feeling that you still want to do it? Even um, though that, because you know, f first of anything being bad, yeah. can really be, you know, hard on you and you, you, you know, I don't, I don't want to go through this again. So yeah. how do you get over that? I just, I just kept at it. I'm not someone that like lets a bad experience kind of take over my life. If, if, if it happens, it happens and then you just take it as it comes and then move on. As I got more and more confident and people started to hear about me more, it built up my confidence to hear them say, oh, you're actually really good, you're all right. You know, so then that just made me want to do it even more. So. Right. So how did you go from the local clubs around where you lived to um, up on that higher level of um, DJ rotation? Like my first residency when I was maybe 17 at Ministry, mm -hmm. and it was like at the student nights. Um, Ministry of Sound and that was like my first kind of experience of having a regular kind of DJ job and learning how to like build a night up and you know just right. just everything really so that was like my kind of training ground. And what did you learn from that um, that you still you know incorporate in what you do today? I just learnt, learnt that you have to think about the whole night as opposed to just yourself Right. Um, because really, like, it's important how, you know, you want people to enjoy themselves, you want them to, to reach the peak of the night and, like, be really excited, but they have to be built up to that. So it's, how do you do that? It's, it's almost like a roller coaster. It's like you start off slow, slow, you build it up, build it up, and then you reach the peak, and then you, you want everyone to be going crazy, and then it kind of... And tone it down but that's just that's just the only way that I've known how to to run a night 
So if you've got like, you know, um, so many different types of crowds in so many different countries, because you've DJed at some of the most tremendous um, events from Cannes to, you know, Bollywood and all over Europe, all over North America, I mean, you've done it all, right? So, you know, with that comes so many different expectations from the people that book you, as well as um, the people that are there to enjoy the night. How do you kind of um, get into the mode or the vibe of understanding what's going to work for every individual experience? I don't usually know what I'm going to play until I get there. Okay. The only way that I figure it out is when I get there and I look at the people and I'll, I'll maybe look at what you know the, the previous DJ is playing and what they're reacting to and then I'll I'll kind of just feed off of that and really it's just like it's trial and error it's, but you know sometimes it's obvious you know you, you you do a party and you know that you know the kids are this age so you know they're gonna like this kind of music and, right you know but sometimes it's really hard because mm. you know there's so many different types of people to please so you've got to really know how to actually I'm an open format DJ and you have to know how to be open format you can't you know just it's it's hard it's hard work because mm -hmm. you know you're going from so many different genres and trying to please everyone and keep everyone happy um you just know how have to know how to to do it and do it quick right and to and also to know how to save yourself as well right so, you know, sometimes you'll do something and it doesn't work and you have to think like three four steps ahead so like if i play something and i think maybe they're not going to like this i'll have like another three records in my head right that i know i can come back with so it's, it's quite scientific right uh, it's a lot of pressure um i mean you're probably used I, to that pressure now right because you have a formula yeah um that works for you i mean you don't get to where you you've gotten to without figuring out like you said having a scientific formula yeah. but i mean it, um, i there's still pressure. But if, the, if there wasn't pressure, then I'd be bored out of my mind. Right. The DJ Caper Show has been running for um, a long, long time now yeah. with um, BBC Radio. How did you get that gig? I think I, I was asked to, to do a showcase set at um, the Asian Musicals, the UK Asian Musicals. Right. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I literally, I just went in there with my eyes closed and I was like, okay, this is a different scene. <laughs> this is this something that I haven't experienced? But from that night on, I like it was like word had got out to every single person, including the BBC Asian Network. So the next day, you know, I got phone calls saying, uh, do you want to come in and do guest mix, and this and that and this and that. And it was just like gradually we built up a relationship. And then when they decided to relaunch in 2006. They asked me if I wanted to do it, and I was like, "Cool, I'd, you know, it's an opportunity, and it's a, you know, way to experience something new and learn a new skill." So. Absolutely, and a different platform than you know the live audience experience. How is um, being a DJ of a radio show different than the live experience from your perspective? When you're DJing to a crowd, you're feeding off the crowd. You s actually see people and you see what they're reacting to. When you're on radio, it's like you're imagining it in right, your head. Right, right, right. And also, I get the opportunity to play music that you know I think is great and not necessarily known. And you know, I get to influence people, um, champion music that I really believe in. To get to that place and to be positioned as a music expert, which you are. Mm. It's a pretty tremendous success story as a South Asian, as a female, mm. right, in this very male-dominated um, industry, mm. right? That's got to really feel fab. Well, I've definitely have to try and prove myself. You know, when I first started on radio, I, I really didn't think anyone was going to take to me at all. And, and, you know, I was new on radio as well. I'd never, ever picked up a microphone before. And it was, it was literally like I had to start from scratch and prove to people that I'm actually worthy of doing this. Um, and you've earned your um, stripes. Yeah, I've, right? I've, I've paid my dues. Absolutely. <laughs> so what, what does the future hold for you? I want to get more and more into making music. Um, I studied music technology for like four years. Wow. And creative music as well. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. It's just, you know, trying to juggle everything at the same time is just impossible. So I want to 
actually make more of a conscious effort to put more energy into that side of me. How close are you to creating the DJ Caper brand? It's hard work. To, people think it's easy to create a brand. It's really not easy at all. Trust me, I know. You, exactly. Yes. Because um, you really have to stick to your guns. Mm -hmm. You can't be like, you know, what I've been doing for the past however many years. Like, oh, one minute I'm, I'm a hip-hop DJ. Next minute I'm a dubstep DJ. Next minute I'm a rock DJ. You know, you really have to stick to your guns and you have to be like, this is what I represent. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be um, a huge, exciting thing that I'm going to wait for. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen this year. And I, I, and I want you to come back with that DJ Caper sound. Oh yeah, yeah So we yeah. can totally rock it. Definitely. All right? Definitely. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for your time, Thank sweetheart. Thank you so much.